IXBRL Mate's been created to help you with a solution to the creation of IXBRL files for CRPC submissions. Before you even start the submission of the file, I suggest that you first gather up the information, get the AFS uh, in PDF, Excel or Word, study them and see whether you actually need to do an IXBRL submission for a start. A lot of people misunderstand what's required. In order to do that, we've uh, created a submission flowchart, which you can have a look at. And that will show you the process to go through in order to determine whether you need an IXBRL submission or an FAS submission. Remember, it's one or the other. So start off by assessing whether your company needs to create the IXBRL file before you go ahead and do that. Right, for those companies that do need the IXBRL, we start off by creating a new client. Choose the name of the client and enter it into here. I suggest that you uh, finish off the description with the year that you're going to be dealing with. Right, the very first question that's, on, that's asked of you, which is very important, is which accounting standard has been used to prepare the annual financial statements? Is it full IFRS or is it IFRS for SMEs? In this case, we're going to choose IFRS for SMEs. That selection um, defines the drop-down box up here. It's very important that you choose the right accounting framework for the IXBRL reporting. Capture the name and registration number of the company. And then select the year-end date for the current period. When you do that, it will calculate all the other dates automatically. IXBRL Mate is essentially a report writing tool which enables you to capture the data from your existing financial statements and create a new representation of that data in an IXBRL file. The way that we do that is by either copying and pasting into IXBRL Mate or linking data to cells in worksheets uh, inside Excel. Now you can link to any Excel worksheet, but I'm going to start off by just capturing the client data. And the way that we've done that is we created a spreadsheet that you enter the client data into that spreadsheet and then you extract the data from that spreadsheet into IXBRL Mate. Okay, we'll do that by choosing the Excel file up here that we're going to work in. Now these are the spreadsheets that we created. And they were copied into your client folder when you created this, um, this client. So the first one is called Input Client Form. We'll choose that and we'll click on it to open it. This spreadsheet contains information which is not normally in the annual financial statements but is needed for the CRPC submission. So let's go ahead and fill in all the uh, orange blocks, all the input blocks. If it has a star or a double star next to it, it means you have to have that information in here. And um, let's go for that. Remember it's just the orange blocks uh, with the stars and the other ones you can leave out or you can Put them in if you want to. Just a note on these items that I've highlighted in red, only one of them can be true. Some of the items can be selected from a drop down box like this one. It will drop down and these are the options that are available you need to choose one of them. Also note that the country has to be ZAF. South Africa is uh, not a valid option there. It's ZAF. Also note where you have to type in a date. You need to do it in this format. Let's highlight it there. And the presentation currency must be ZAR. And where the professional designation is required, you have to select from the drop-down list as well. Right, once this list is complete, save it and exit. 
Back into iExperimate, now we are ready to extract the data from the Excel file. So the Excel file is selected here. We'll go to Process, Extract Values. This process may take a little while, but when it's done, we'll come back in here and you can see the values that have been extracted. For example, there's a public interest score, our true falses, dates, etc. Right, now we need to get our financial statements into iXBRL Mate. I'm going to show you three different ways of doing that. We'll start off with the Excel links to an Excel file. Let's go to the tagging and we're going to select the Excel file that we want to bring the data in from. I've already saved my AFS into here that we're in an Excel file, so I'll select that and I'll open them. Right, we're going to start in the balance sheet, and here it is. Let's just go back to iXBRL Mate, and let's go and select the balance sheet from here as well. That's number 210. Right, what you see here is the complete listing of all the items that could be in the IFRS for SMEs balance sheet. And each one has got a link, an Excel link, for the current year and for the prior year. Now these Excel links are the key to linking to the Excel spreadsheet. The way that we do it is we'll select an item that we know is in the AFS. So let's take this property, plant and equipment. And if I just click on link up there, what it does is it copies this into the clipboard. I then go and open my Excel. I select the cell that I wish to link, so it's for the current year, properly plant and equipment. And I click up here and press Control V. So that puts that text into that cell and when I press Enter, it names that range to that name. ENR, that's Excel named range 0129. Now I want to do the same for the prior, so I'll click on there. Go into iXBRL Mate, click on Prior, come back to Excel, go to there, Control V, and it will put the named range in there. Press Enter. Okay, I can speed it up a little bit. Uh, let's try it on the next cell. So we know the next item, Trade and Other Receivables. Let's go to um, iXBRL Mate run down here and find trade and other receivables. Okay, let's look at the next item, trade and other receivables and the current assets. Go to iXPRL mate, here's trade and other non-current receivables. That's not the right one. Got to go further down the list. Trade and other current receivables. Now you'll notice the descriptions that are in the taxonomy for IFRS or IFRS for SMEs are quite different to what your na names are in your balance sheet and your income statement sometimes. But these are the only defined ones that we can use. So we have to match from the balance sheet and income statement to these ones. Okay, so this is 145. Click on the link. Go to Excel. Click there. Click there, Control V, and Enter. Let's link the prior by clicking there, there, Control V, then let's put in a P, because that's the prior, then press Enter. So that named range is now gone to 0145P. This one is 0145. Okay, let's try prepayments. We'll look down the list and see if we can find prepayments anywhere. Okay, prepayments is not available in this list, so we have to allocate it to something else. So I think we're going to go with other current financial assets. 148. Let's link, go to Excel, click and link it. Okay, there's nothing in the prior year. We can link it if we want to. Remember with the P and enter, 
or we could just leave it out because it's nothing. Okay, cash and bank. Let's try that one. Now this really helps if you have two screens because then you can work side by side. So it's a little bit slower doing it on one screen like this. Cash and bank will be under cash and cash equivalents. Link back to Excel. Control V, enter, and that one's linked. And the prior, Control V, P, enter. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's small p or a capital P. And let's complete the rest of the balance sheet quickly. Note that we also need to link the totals, like total assets. So let's do that quickly. Total. Okay, total current assets needs to be linked. Link Excel total current assets. Enter and the prior with the P. Okay, now as I've um, linked up all those to the balance sheet, remember I'm just showing you how this works. I've linked up all those to the balance sheet. Now we can extract from the balance sheet. So I'll just save the spreadsheet and move into process, extract values. And the system will now run through the spreadsheet. Sorry, it's on the other screen. And okay, this process can take quite a long time, so you just have to be patient while it works through. But now you'll see the numbers have come through. Obviously, there's a lot of uh, Excel links here that there's no numbers come through for because there were no those items didn't exist in that particular spreadsheet. But what we have got is we've also got some uh, pre-linked spreadsheets. So if we look to the Excel files here, you'll see these. Now we've got a pre-linked one here, IFRS for SMEs AFS. And we'll select that and just open it so you can see what this is all about. Right, all it is is the uh, balance sheet and the income statement and a cash flow. Okay, now it's only three of those uh, possibilities. Um, we've done the statement of financial position balance sheet in the current, non-current, as opposed to the order of liquidity option. If you look in the XBRL, where we select the statements, there are different types now you only have to, we've pre-selected pre the common ones. If you have a different set of statements making up your financial statements, then you need to select the ones that are appropriate for your particular case. Right, so we have a pre-linked uh, spreadsheet. And actually it's, it's probably easier to just come and type the numbers in to the spreadsheet in the this year and the prior year columns. Uh, these, this is already set up with the linking, so you just type those numbers in and then we do the linking. So we'll just see how that works um, by doing the, the cash flow. Okay, I'm just gonna type these numbers in. Right, so I've typed all these numbers into the cash flow statement in our predefined workbook and we can check the totals and we can make sure that these totals agree to our financial statements as we're going along. Save this and we can run the extraction. And there we go, that's done and it's imported. Okay, so here we have these numbers all come through. So what I've showed you is linking to Excel using the pre-linked ones. Now the other option of course is to just type the numbers in. So let's take a look at the um, profit and loss. Okay, some of these numbers have already come through from those other pre-linked worksheets, but the rest of it, we can just simply type the numbers in. We'll do that now. Right, I've opened up my financial statements on the other screen, and then I can just type the numbers in here. 
Got the idea. I'll finish that off now. Okay, well obviously what I'm trying to show you is the different ways that you can do this. Now, by far the most efficient way is to use our pre-linked spreadsheets. That's why we created them and they do make things a lot more efficient. Okay, it's time to look at uh, getting the accounting policies in here. So let's go and select the accounting policies, list of accounting policies here. And the first item with the question mark next to it is a required item. Now what we do here is we just block tag the entire set of accounting policies. In the future, we may need to um, itemize them, but for now we're allowed to just block tag them, so that's what we do. Let's keep it simple. To do that, we'll just use copy-paste, the easiest way. So we'll start at the top, and I'll just block the entire set of accounting policies. Okay, this is just a small set, but it gives you the idea. Right down to there. Okay, so that's selected. Right-click, copy. Jump over to IXBRL and click on the plus paste button. Plus paste will add what's in the clipboard to the bottom of whatever is there. But we've done it all in one hit and it looks reasonable to read. That's the criteria for this side. We can, sh we can cross this over here, make it a bit bigger so we can see it better. But this just needs to be human readable. So that was the accounting policies. Now what about the rest of the notes? Let's go there, list of notes. And again, it's just the first item that we need to worry about. Come back to my financial statements and run down to where the notes start. And what we'll do is we'll try and block the entire set of notes and see if that comes out okay. If it doesn't, then we'll do it in, sta in parts, we'll do it in stages. So let's take the full amount, right click copy, back to IXBRL mate, and paste. Okay, these columns looks like the numbers lined up, and um, yeah, quite honestly, that, that looks just fine. Yeah, that looks fine. If we, uh, if we, Working, say, from PDF, we might need to copy from PDF, paste into Excel, and then from Excel into here. But that looks like we've completed those parts. Let's see what else is there to do. Okay, director's report. Okay, again, let's go there. One item. Back to the financial statements. Let's go to the director's report. And we can block tag the entire director's report. So we do a copy, back to IXBRL, paste, that looks fine. Director's responsibility statement, if we have one. Okay, in fact, we need to have one because it says there's an error if it's not reported. Okay, let's go in here, let's see where do we do that. Okay, in this set of financial statements, um, place where directors take their responsibilities actually in here. Okay, so we'll just take that, copy, and paste. That's readable. Let's carry on. Auditor's report. Okay, let's go to the, get the auditor's report. Here we go. Copy right down to the bottom, control C or shift copy and back to IXBRL and paste. Is it readable? Yeah, that looks fine. Oh, there's one item here, name of auditor. So we actually need the auditor's name uh, to be put in here. So we double click on here and fill in their name. Okay, is there anything else in there? No. What else? Um, 
Okay, director's functions and remuneration, we actually don't have to disclose that. So we can remove that from our listing by going to select statements, running down to the bottom, double click, and that one's gone. Okay, our statement of cash flows, we did the 510, the direct method. So we'll untick that one. And one thing left to do is statement of changes in equity. So we'll go there. And we need to go down and find the items that must be disclosed. And we need to fill these in. So we can do this manually probably is the easiest way right now. Let's go there. Equity. Okay, there's my opening balance. Just going to move this off to the side. Put that number in there. Okay, it doesn't like the spaces, so we take the spaces out. Uh, the profit for the year was. Okay. Now, a couple of things to note here that we didn't have any other comprehensive income, so that is a zero. And if it's a zero, which it would be for this year as well. Um, we have to have a footnote. So in the footnote, we just say none. Okay. So the total comprehensive income is actually this profit figure for there. And then down here, that also is the total increase in equity. And then our equity at the end of the period. Oh, wait. In this case, we had some dividends. So dividends, yes. So in fact, this would be this number less the 3.6 and our equity at the end of the period, which would be our equity at the beginning of the period. And oh, we also had an increase in equity this time. Uh, so that would be those numbers added together. And the equity at the end of the period. Now when we do the validations, the validations actually check some of these numbers and make sure that they add up. So we have now completed everything. Let's run through and make sure that we've um, put in everything that needed or is a mandatory field. Okay, so we can just choose all here. Right, so we're starting at the top and running our way down. Let's look. Okay, that was a review. And if it's review item, we need it in there. See these that say footnote of nil, they're not highlighting anything because they're not nil. Okay, we're looking pretty good. Oh, there's one item. Date of approval of annual financial statements. Okay. I know that was the 17th of August. Okay, this auditor's report, that's there. Yeah, that looks like we've got everything. So all our existence checks are hunky-dory. Let's now go to the process where we actually create the IXBRL file. So it's created it. That's the file. If we click on it, it will open it up in our web browser and this is what the IXBRL file looks like. This is the human readable part. The machine readable part is deep inside. In fact we can look at it if we take this figure here for example and we right click we choose to inspect. Here we can see what this line item is all about and the tagging. So this has been tagged if SMEs revenue and that amount. That's the tagging that's happened inside the program, inside the IXBRL file. Okay, let's have a look through it, see if it makes sense, if it looks okay, if it's readable. Okay, these tables, sometimes the formatting is not great, but, um, but it is readable, so that will pass the test. So that looks good. Right, let's submit that to the validation engine. This is where we test 
on the CRPC engine and see what comes back. It's going to report any errors in calculations, any errors in existence. Let's see what we've got. Alright, first error is a value assertion and it says, if we look in this business rule, it says other comprehensive income should be reported for the current period, if applicable. Alright, in our case we didn't have any other comprehensive income, so there's nothing to report. It's just a warning, so it means it's not going to be rejected and we can move on from there. Okay, no other errors on there. IXBRL errors. Okay, this is where it does some calculation checks. And this one is checking a, a calculation on one of the income statements. Now this is an income statement 320. But we don't, we're not using income statement 320. We're using 310. Okay, so we never presented income statement 320. Yet some of the figures that are in 310 are also in 320 and it's telling us they don't add up. But we can ignore it. It's just a warning. Okay, it's frowny face. Because um, we don't do that one. And then this is nothing. So we're good. We're good to go. We can actually submit that to CRPC and that will be validated and accepted. Well done. So how do we submit it to CRPC? Well, you might ask. What you do is you log on to the CRPC e-services and you, when you complete the annual return for this client, at the end of the process you'll be asked to upload the IXBRL file. Now that file is this file here. Okay, it's .xhtml. That's the file that gets uploaded and that should be accepted. So that is how we use IXBRL Mate to create the IXBRL submission file. If you have any questions, give us a call, pop us an email, we can team view with you, do whatever we need to do to sort out problems. Quite often on the validations, there will be errors that you don't understand. If you can't work it out for yourself, give us a call and we'll help you. Thanks.